Good evening. If you're, happy, if you're happy this evening, say amen. 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 Today we are going to talk on a very special subject on romance. Amen? amen. You like the topic romance? Yes. Really? <laughs> okay, you know, when we say romance, people say, oh, romance, okay, what is he trying to talk? Huh? But when you study the Bible, when you, when you take the meaning romance and see in the, in the dictionary, it says a love affair. Okay, it's not a vulgar meaning. It's not a vulgar word. It's not a dirty word. It's a good word. It's love affair. Okay, but in this world today, what happened? Everything, you know, just people take any word for or any action. And what they do is they give a very dirty expression. And then immediately, oh, this is wrong. And immediately what happened? A negative thought comes in the minds of the people today. Right? So I said, said romance. I didn't. I didn't know. I don't understand. I don't know what really clicked to your mind. But we are going to talk about two kind of romance today, and and the title will be today. If I have to title this message, it will be moments of romance. Moments of romance. So turn your Bibles to the book of Judges, chapter sixteen. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time. We ask you to bless us as we go through this scripture and we are, as we are going to study about this romance. Oh God, help us to understand as there are different types of romance in the world. Oh God, we pray that we may be able to uh, understand the truth and uh, apply it to our life and that we may be able to have a good affair with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask you, oh God, to speak to your people that they will... Uh, listen carefully. They will listen to learn and learn to listen. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 16. Uh, we, are, we see a romance over here uh, between Delilah and Samson. Okay? Between Delilah and Samson. Now the name Delilah uh, sounds very good, right? But it's a very bad woman. She's a wicked woman. I went to... I, uh, I went to a hotel uh, in Panjim. I wanted to ask about a, for the conference hall. I went to ask them for the, pri uh, the rent, how much they're going to charge for one day. And, um, and the receptionist there, you know, we spoke and I gave a gospel track and I asked her what is her name. And she said her name is Delilah. I said, come again, what is your name? She said, Delilah. And say, are you serious? <laughs> but she, you know, you know what? She's coming from a Roman Catholic background, and they and uh, the parents, the people, don't know um, what kind of name to give. And the Bible says, uh, you know what? Uh, a good name is uh, uh, a, a good name is uh, rather to be given than you know than all these things, you know, whatever silvers and golds and riches. And a good name should be chosen. Okay, a good name rather to be chosen. And so we see a Delilah over here. And then we see Samson also. <coughs> We're going to see two kinds of romance today. And they can, there can be only two kinds of romance. One is a worldly romance. And the other is a spiritual romance. Okay? Worldly romance and a spiritual romance. And uh, as we will be, uh, you know, we are, there's a lot of scriptures that I'm, uh, in this chapter itself, in Judges chapter 16, we're going to go through different, different verses over here. So I'm not going to read everything as I'm preaching. We will look into every verses. Um, and what you find over here is, you must understand, Samson is one of the strongest men, right? He's very strong. Uh, is a, you know is very strong. He's a man who has actually troubled the Philistine, Philistines, and they are really fed up of him, and they are afraid of him, and they want to destroy him, because Samson is really giving a tough time to the people of Philistines. So Samson is a strong man over here. Now what you find in chapter 16, verse 4, it says, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now the Bible says here that uh, Samson loved a woman. He loved a woman. Now this is a one-side love. Okay, just a one side love. Samson loved a woman. But this woman is not loving him. 
Okay, what she actually loves is she loves money. She is a wicked woman. She is a very, uh, she is a bad, dirty, wicked woman. In verse 5 you read, the word of God says, And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. Now see, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. Okay, so what she wants to do now, what she needs, she wants money. All that she loves is money, money, money. Okay, and uh, she does not love Samson, but Samson loved Delilah, the Bible says. He loved a woman whose name was Delilah. And, um, and, and what she loves? She loves money. Now these people of Philistines are offering her 1100 pieces of silver. What do you find in the Bible says in verse 6, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. You know, from verse 16 to 18, if you will read, you see the techniques of wooing, a techniques of enticing, a technique of tempting a person to get into sin, or a technique of uh, enticing a person to know his weakness. And from verse 6 through 18, if you will read, you will find how she is wooing and how she is using words to take out that secret of Samson, where his strength lieth. See in verse 9. Now there were men lying in wait. Now what happened is, she is asking where is his strength uh, in verse 6. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, where in thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Okay, now she wants to know where is the strength that lieth of Samson. She wants to know the secret. She, why? Because her, what she likes, loves is, what does she love? Money. She loves money. And if she comes to know the secret, and, and, and what happened, and she, if she hand over, hands over Samson to this people of Philistine, what is she going to get in return? She is going to get money because that is where her heart is. She loves the money. Okay, she is a wicked woman. And then we will find uh, that Samson does not tell her, tell her where the strength lieth. In verse 9, uh, you know, in, okay, we'll, we'll just go through verses. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green weeds that, uh, that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green wreaths which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the wreaths, a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire, so his strength was not known. Okay, now what you understand from this is, Samson does not trust Delilah. Okay, he loves her. Now his love is for what? He, all that he loves is fleshy love over here. Okay, it's a fleshy love. Because if he had truly loved her, then he would have told the truth. And so what happened? His, desire, his uh, love over here is a, is a worldly romance. And he does not trust her. Perhaps he knows what her characters are. Okay, and now he is willing to romance with the world. He is willing to get into the enticement and the sin of the world. He is willing, he is going as a dog that returns back to the vomit. You know, many a times, you know, when people sin, they do, oh, the Satan did it to me. Satan made that, uh, made me to fall. No, that's not the truth. Book of James says what? It is a... What, what does book of James say? James chapter about temptation. It is your own desire. Huh? Turn your Bibles to the book of James. And let us see what the Bible says in book of James. Book of James. Chapter. 
verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Now, God does not tempt any man. Okay? Satan does tempt people to fall in sin. God does not uh, tempt. So, people should not say, Oh, God made me to tempt. God tempted me. and So, that is false. That's wrong. It's Satan tempts. But, here the answer, to the, the truth is, but every man, read that, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay? It is the man's desire. Oh, you see, when you are saved, you know, when you are saved, God gives you that gift of repentance. And you repent of your sin. Okay? But... You know, if you are, it is, uh, you know, God gives you the, uh, God give, gives you the hatred, hatred towards sin. But you know what? It is a person, it is a man that desires it, and it is he who wants to uh, fall into it, and he goes as an ox for slaughter. He goes back to that same vomit, because he loves it. It is, it, it is you, okay? It is not Satan. It is you who wants to do it. And that's the reason that you fall. Okay? It's you and I. It's our desire. And it's wrong. And so, God has given us the Holy Spirit to say no to sin. And to hate that sin. But what people do is, instead of listening to the Holy Spirit and obeying the word of God. They want to have that appetite of sin. And this is exactly what uh, uh, Samson does. What he does, he does not love, uh, he, uh, he, his love for Delilah is not that genuine love. He loved her, but his love is fleshly love. Because if he genuinely loved her, he would have told her the truth, right? He genuinely did not love, he did not trust her. So he's not telling. And, and what is her uh, character? She's a wicked woman. He knows her character. And so what she does is, in verse 10, And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, Now see, what you from up until verse eighteen you find, uh, um, you know she is wooing her. She is uh, she is wooing, uh, she is wooing him. Uh, she is using all her fl sweet flattery words and say, "Oh no, you are not loving me. I don't think you love me because you're not telling me the truth. If you tell, if you love me, you will do. It. You'll tell me the truth. And now at least tell me." And and what Samson does is he does not trust her, so he does not tell her the truth. Okay, but. Hear what it comes in verse 15. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. So you don't love me, because you're not telling me the truth. Now what she wants is, she wants the money. And in order to get the money... What she has to do? She has to know what the secret of Samson's strength is. Verse 16, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was waxed unto death. You see what? He could have just gone out of it. But you know what? He was willing to be there and play with that sin, play with that temptation. He was willing, he was just vomit, going back to his vomit again and again and again. He knows her character. He's not telling her the truth. He does not trust her. But what he's doing is he's going again and again and again with her living in sin. And now what happened? When you put your hand inside fire, are you going to be safe? No, the fire is going to burn you. Okay? And so say, uh, Samson cannot be safe over here if he is going to play with sin. So what, did ha what happened? She is pressing him. She is every day. Now he is really, he's, the Bible says, and it came to pass when she, stressed, when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was waxed unto death. 
Okay, he is also saying, uh, you know, she is told, she is just behind him, bragging always, always, um, you know, just uh, asking him for the secret where the strength lies, and and she is selling all those things. She say, oh, you don't love me, and what kind of person you are, what kind of love is, and you know, it's like uh, the Bible says, so that his soul was waxed unto death, but so much pressure she was putting upon him. Verse seventeen. You see what happens when you compromise with sin, you will only grow weak, weaker and weaker. Okay, when you compromise, when you play with sin, in spite of knowing that is wrong and you still do it over and over again, your heart will be hardened. Okay, and what the result will be, you're going to be a weak man, a weaker man. The Bible says in verse 17 that he told her all his heart. <laughs> and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and, and be like any other man. You see, he gave out the secret now. All that she wants is to know the secret so that she can tell the Philistines, man, and that she could get what she really loves. The silver, money, wealth. This is the wicked, wicked woman here. And he, a man upon whom the Spirit of God is, what he is doing? He is compromising with sin, and he is playing with sin, and he is slipping with sin. And now what happened? When you compromise with sin, you cannot escape the consequences of it. You will end up into a miserable life. Hmm? You know what? And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistine came up unto her and brought money in their hand. <laughs> Verse 19. You see what happened? And she made him sleep upon her. Nee. Samson, a strong man, became a laptop for Delilah. Amen? She became, he became a laptop for Delilah. He's sleeping on her knees now and she's playing with him. A man of God became a laptop for Delilah. A play toy. No, oh, sleeping on her knees, you know, she is actually giving him so much of pleasure, putting her hands around a, a, a hair of his head and, and tickling him, making him feel good, giving him the pleasure. And then what happened? And she called for the man, for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. She began to afflict him. You see? Compromising with sins. Playing with sin. Living in sin. Or living around sin. Will always lead you to fall into sin. And make you a weak, miserable human being. You know about Loth, that Loth right? He lifted up his eyes towards Jordan and he pitched his tent toward Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? Then what happened? That people's life influenced Lot's daughter. And then we know what the story is. Huh? We'll probably see it on Sunday. Um, and so what we have, what we see is being around sin, being in sin or being with sin. Compromising with all these things will make us miserable. Will take away that power of God from us. You know what happened over here? You know what, what the Bible says in verse 19? And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. You know, if, if see in chapter 15. See in Judges chapter 15 verse 5. Uh, um, I mean 14 verse 5. Judges chapter 14 verse 5, the Bible says, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards and Timnath 
uh, of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. Who is the roaring lion? <laughs> the devil is as a roaring lion waiting to devour, right? And so here, Samson sees a young lion roaring against him. And what he does? And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father and his mother, or his mother, what he had done. Amen? Amen. You see what happened? He is now able to, he, he ran the lion into two. He killed him. Who is stronger? Samson or lion? Samson. But when he came in front of Delilah, who is stronger? Samson or Delilah? <laughs> you see? So who is stronger now? Delilah or lion? Delilah. Compromising with sin. Living in sin. Living around sin. Returning back to the vomit. Mm. See in verse 20 what happens. And she said, The Philistines be upon this Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other time. You know what? Everything is fine with me. You don't understand me. Everything is fine with me. No brother. And she said, The Philistines be upon this Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Sad. We just read in chapter 14 verse 5 and 6. That the spirit of God. Uh, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Mightily. And what happened? He tore the line in two. He, ran, he tore the line into two. He rent it. And here. For Delilah he became a toy. He became a laptop. Slipping on her knees. And she shaved it. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. See the consequences of playing with sin, compromising with sin, living around sin, and living in sin. You know, we as a Christian, we may not, we will not lose our salvation. But remember, you will lose the power of God. You will lose the joy of salvation. You are going to live a miserable life if we are going to compromise and live in sin and live around sin. And that's dangerous. See verse 25, what happens? The consequences of flirting with sin. See, verse 25, and it came to pass... When their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make a sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between pillars. They played with him. They made him a sport now. See in verse 21, But the Philistine took him and put, his, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. A man of God, upon whom the Spirit of God was mightily upon him, who was able to tear the lion into two, for just compromising with sin, living in sin and living around sin, Choosing to be enticed by Delilah. What is his consequences? The Lord departed from him. He is grinding in the prison. And he became a sport to the people of Philistine. And you know what? Became a bad testimony. They are praising Dagon over there now. This is the worldly romance. And this will make your life miserable. This will make you weak and weak. If you choose... To be enticed, or if you choose to compromise with sin or anything. But the good news is, I just shared the bad news now. But I want to have a good give you the good news. There is another romance, and that romance is a spiritual romance. Amen. Amen. A romance with Jesus Christ. Remember, my friend, romance with Jesus Christ is a spiritual romance. You know, when you read the book of Song of Solomon, 
what you find, you find a relationship between, you will find a love relationship between God and Israel. You find a love relationship between Solomon and his Sunamite wife, woman. You find a love relationship between, a romance between Jesus Christ and the church in the book of Song of Solomon. Okay, if you turn with me to the book of 1st John chapter, uh, 1st John chapter 4, 1st John chapter 4, and verse 10, the word of God says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Amen? Amen. You see there, what you found in spiritual, in worldly romance, Samson loved Delilah, but Delilah did not love. Delilah loved money. Samson went around choosing. Samson went around loving. But what do you find over here? Here we find God loved us first. Amen? Amen. Let's turn to book of John chapter 15. Gospel of John chapter 15. John chapter 15 verse 16. And the word of God says, You ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Amen? Amen. You have not, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask, ask uh, whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You see, what you will find over here is, Jesus is loving us first. Jesus is choosing us first. Amen? Amen. You see, He is the one who is loving us. He's not trying to take anything away from us. He is the one who is loving us. He has chosen us. There what we find, Samson is the one who is loving Delilah. But she does not love him. He went around choosing. She is loving the money. But when it comes to spiritual romance... Jesus loves you first. Amen? Amen? And that's why we love Him. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because He loved us first. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then, you know, um, uh, turn to book of Revelation. I'll show you another thing. Book of Revelation chapter 19. Book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. The word of God says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And His wife has made herself ready. Amen. You see, the church is the wife of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. The wife of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a spiritual romance between the bridegroom and... And the bride, which is the church. See in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. The word of God says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Amen? Amen. You see, there is a spiritual romance, and the spiritual romance is a romance between the Lamb and the Lamb's wife, Jesus Christ, and the church. Amen? Amen. That's you and Jesus Christ. So you have a spiritual romance. That's a love affair with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, you know what happens? So turn to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And verse 24. Here the story is, here Jesus, you know, the, 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 the Lord's Supper, the Supper is there. And, and Jesus is saying, hey, come on, one of you among you is going to betray me. And so now everybody is asking, Lord, who is this? Is it I? Peter says, Lord, is it I? And everybody wants to know who is that person. And the Lord is not telling the secret to anybody. But then we'll see where well, you yeah. Verse 24, Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom 
he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a soap when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the soap, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. You know what you find over here? You'll find here, here there is a spiritual romance. In the worldly romance, you'll find Samson became a laptop for Delilah. You are sleeping on her knees. In the spiritual romance, you know what? You'll find a beloved apostle, John, is leaning on the bosom of Jesus Christ. Spiritual romance. But yeah, the, another thing, thing is, when Samson was um, uh, uh, on, uh, sleeping on the knees of Delilah, what happened? Samson told all the secrets to Delilah. Delilah wanted to know the secret. Why? Why? Because of money. Delilah wanted the secret. But when it comes to spiritual romance with Jesus Christ, Jesus tells the secret to you. Amen? Amen. Jesus told to the beloved John, the apostle, he told, the one who, to whom I will give this soap after dipping, he is the one who is going to betray me. See, the spiritual romance is that God tells you, Jesus, uh, he tells you all the secrets to you. Amen? Amen. He does not, you know, he, uh, but in, when it comes to the worldly romance, the world wants to know all the secret to destroy you. But in spiritual romance, Jesus tells you the secret. He tells you and He leads you and He guides you. You know what? We found in, 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 when you read the book of Judges chapter 16, if you love me, you will tell. If you love me, you will tell. You know what? Never believe when someone does that. Somebody is trying to get something out of you. You know, the Pharisees said, if you are the son of God, then save yourself. Right? Satan said what? If you, if you are the son of God, turn the stone into bread. Turn the, uh, what is that? Uh, for, you know, if you, if you are the son of God, fall down from, and I will give you all this. If you are the son of God, then, bow, you know, if, 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 if. <laughs> if you love me, do this for me. If you love me, do that for me. Hey, no. Jesus says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you first. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, you have not loved me, but I have loved you first. Amen. He not only loved us, but he gave himself for us. Amen? Amen? It's not taking anything, but he gave himself for us. You see the difference between the worldly romance and the spiritual romance? A worldly romance is a romance with Delilah. And what is the consequences? The Lord departed from Samson. He became a sport. He grinded in the prison. And what happened? It became a bad testimony. He lost his strength. But when it comes to spiritual romance, a romance with Jesus Christ, Jesus loves you. Jesus chose you. And Jesus gives you the secret. And He makes you a fruitful Christian. Amen? Amen. What are you going to choose today? Are you going to choose to romance with Jesus Christ or choose to romance with Delilah? I hope and I pray that you have already made a choice to romance with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. A spiritual romance. A love affair with the Lord Jesus Christ. To love Him, to serve Him, to obey His word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you and praise you, God, for this time. Lord, we have seen how uh, playing with sin and being in sin and being around sin, what are the consequences of God? We thank you, God, that there is a romance and that romance is a romance with Jesus. We thank you, God, that you have saved us, you loved us, you chose us, and you gave us all the secret in the scripture, O God. You have revealed your mystery to us. Help us to be obedient, help us to be grateful to you, to love you more, O oh Lord, and, and give you the first priority in our lives, O oh God. O oh God, uh, we love to lean on the, in thy bosom, O oh Master. And we thank you that we can have this spiritual romance with you. And, O oh Lord, we ask you to bless all our church members, that they will grow spiritually, and that they will grow in a love affair with you, O oh Master, and that they may know that Jesus... Thou loved them, uh, thou loved them, O Lord, and thou hast chosen them, and that they will be always grateful to you, O Master. 
We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost abide with you all now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. And again, Amen. Again, Amen. Amen. God bless you.